I spend a lot of time staring at camera specs and handling them at my work, so I love to compare them to each other to see what really is the best value that you can get at whatever price point. And if you're looking to get into photography around $1,000, then you've probably been looking at the Sony a6400 as well as the Canon R50. So let's compare them to each other and see how they stack up. Okay, so before we get into it, I wanna clarify so there's no disappointment that there's not gonna be any test footage from the R50 because I don't own one. So this is mostly just gonna be comparing the specs of the two and my personal experiences. So if you're still interested, let's have a look. So let's start off with the similarities. They both have a 24 megapixel sensor. They can both record 4K up to 30 FPS and it's gonna be downsampled from 6K they can both record 1080p up to 120 FPS, but the A6400 can do that while still having an audio recording. So it's more versatile that way. They both have an ISO range of 100 to 32,000, but the A6400 can be boosted up to 102,800, though it's gonna be a grainy mess, so, you know. Shutter speeds are also basically identical, around 10 FPS. Both have a single SD card slot. Both have a microphone port for plugging in an external microphone. And neither of the cameras have any sort of in-body image stabilization, though the R50 does have electronic stabilization. So there are a lot of similarities, but how do the two differ then? Well, here's where it gets interesting. Probably the biggest difference between the two cameras is the fact that the R50 has a fully articulating screen. The a screen on the A6400 does tilt up, but if you have anything the hot shoe, then it's gonna completely block the screen. There are additional stuff that you can get to move that hot shoe somewhere else, but that's just extra stuff that you need to get. It's a hassle. The fully articulating screen on the R50 is just much more usable in many more situations. Also, even though they're both APS-C cameras, the Sony a6400 is a Sony crop sensor, so it is a 1.5 times crop compared to a full frame sensor. But the Canon, being Canon, it is actually a smaller sensor, so it's a 1.6 times crop. That only applies if you're recording 4K24. If you go to 4K30, then the a6400 applies a 1.2 times crop to that already cropped image which actually pushed it further in than the Canon, which doesn't crop in 30 FPS. So it's a give and take here. But basically that difference in photography means that if you have a 50 millimeter lens on the a6400, that is gonna be a 75 millimeter. If you have a 50 millimeter lens on the Canon, it's gonna be an 80 millimeter. So it's always gonna be a little more pushed in. For photographers, the R50 also has focus bracketing built in. So you can get those really well overall focused shots that you can't do automatically on the A6400. So if you wanna do focus stacking, you're gonna to have to twist that lens yourself. The R50 has more focus points with its 651 compared to the A6400's 425, but that point system is only a small fraction of what goes into an actually functioning focus system. And I've never had any sort of issue with the A6400's autofocus. It is super good, it is super sticky, and really, really accurate. So basically a draw here. The R50's fully articulating screen is 1.62 million dots compared to the A6400's 921,000 dots. Meaning that overall, that R50 display is gonna be much, much better quality than the one on the A6400. Meaning it's easier to use accurately in your photography or videography. While both of the cameras can record 4K, the R50 can do it in 10 bit. But for some reason, Canon decided not to include C-Log in the R50's options. So that means if you're looking to grade your footage, Edge does actually go to the A6400 since it has Sony's S-Log, S-Log3, S-Log Cine, all of those modes. 
while the R50 has no log mode at all. And even though the A6400's video is only 8-bit, it still makes a difference when you want to grade it yourself. That's actually what I do on my A6400. The low light performance is also better on the A6400 because it is pretty close to the one on the ZV-E10. And like I went over in the comparison video between the ZV-E10 and R50, the ZV-E10 blows the R50 out of the water and the A6400 is really close to the, to the ZV-E10. So the crown in low light does go to the A6400 in this comparison. For video shooters, the R50 does offer electronic image stabilization. So all you video shooters, you're gonna have a chance to crop in a little bit and get more stable footage right in the camera. The A64 has none of that. So you better have a good post-processing stabilization software ready to go. On top of that, the R50 does have its video recording limited to 60 minutes, while the A6400 is unlimited. So if you're shooting long form videos, like maybe you wanna record your podcast or you wanna do a long interview, you're gonna to wanna to use the A6400. Sure, you can do it in the R50 as well, but you're gonna to have to restart that recording as soon as the 60 minutes is up. In terms of ports and connectivity, the A6400 has a micro USB port while the R50 has a USB-C port. But the difference is actually smaller than you think because that USB-C port on the R50 is still a USB 2.0, meaning that it is actually just as slow as the micro USB port on the A6400. Now, while both cameras are small and compact, relatively the same size, the R50 is a little taller, the A6400 is a little wider, the grip on the A6400 is much more comfortable to hold. So the ergonomics in terms of the grip go to the A6400. Personally, I do like my viewfinders to be on the top. So the point for the viewfinder actually goes for the R50. So the ergonomics is sort of a tie here, depending on what you're looking for. There is also a price difference, at least in the US, the amount of price difference can vary depending on where you're from, but in the US, it is about $100. So the A6400 is about 750 bucks, while the R50 is 679 bucks. Add in a kit lens, it goes up 100. So 100 to a $50 difference. Finally, probably the biggest difference that you wanna consider between these two cameras is the lens selection. So the Canon R50 uses Canon's RF mount system, which is still relatively new. And because Canon locked down that system and doesn't wanna let any third party brands make RF lenses, the lens selection is still quite small and it can get really expensive. And then you can compare that to Sony's E-mount system, which is just massive due to the crop sensor cameras and the full frame cameras all going all freely usable on either system and the third party manufacturers being allowed to make any lenses. So you have everything from Sony, Tamron, Sigma, Viltrox and others. The lens selection on the Sony E-mount is just massive, which also means that you can get great lenses for less money, for cheaper. As an example, if you're a future content creator or you want to do some video work, you can pick up the A6400 for about 750 bucks and then the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 for about 400 bucks, getting you a really, really good package for just about 1,200-ish bucks. But if you want to do the same with the R50, well, that's 679 for the body and for the lens, you don't really have a 16 millimeter F1.4 in the RF mount. The closest equivalent is a 16 millimeter F2.8 from Canon, but that's a 2.8. That's not even close to being the same aperture as the Sigma. It's relatively the same price though. So, you know, there's that. Or you can just go ahead and get the Sigma EF version of that same lens, but then you're taking that old system, putting it on your new camera, it's just 
you're forced to sacrifice in some way, which you just don't need to do on the Sony E-mount system. So if you're getting the camera for video stuff, then I would say that the R50 takes the cake here. But then again, I would say that the comparison in video should be against the ZV-E10 in where the ZV-E10 actually wins. But if you're getting the camera for photography, well, now it's a much closer call. Both have good sides, bad sides, but I would say that the lens selection of the Sony system is more important to me, which means for me, the Sony a6400 was the right call. But the R50's better video features are still compelling, so it's not a straightforward comparison, and you're gonna have to choose what you prioritize yourself. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested to hear in what you guys have to think. We don't have to fight over Canon versus Sony. Just let me know your thoughts in the comments. Okay, have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I will see you all next time. Okay, bye.